Nothing is constant in politics, not your allies and certainly not your rivals. All of it changes with time and circumstance. Just ask the government of Ukraine. After Russia invaded, they were upset with India. They had all sorts of questions. Why is India not condemning Russia? Why is India still buying Russian oil? Why isn't Prime Minister Modi asking Putin to pull back? All sorts of emotional questions. But Kiev made no genuine effort to reach out to understand India's position. Until now, that is. Today, Ukraine's foreign minister landed in New Delhi. His name is Dimitro Kuleba. He's on a two-day visit to India. It's his first as foreign minister, his first visit. And the way he announced this visit was quite interesting. Kuleba uploaded a video last week. It was a montage of three things. Holy celebrations, himself and Mahatma Gandhi. I know it sounds strange. But that was Kuleba's message. He linked Gandhi's non-violence to Ukraine's resistance. And today he continued that. He visited Gandhi's memorial in Rajghat. Not a bad idea. Many foreign leaders have taken inspiration from Mahatma Gandhi. It's a good way to connect to Indians. But that alone will not help. Kuleba needs to convince the Indian leadership. And he will have a chance tomorrow. That's when he'll meet Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar. He will hold talks with the Deputy National Security Advisor. But what's the goal here? What is Kuleba hoping to achieve in India? This well, is what he said to before landing the in India. Indian relationship. A week ago, Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, spoke with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. They discussed bilateral cooperation, trade, and the upcoming Global Peace Summit. My visit will help put their agreements into action and further develop our ties. Ukraine sees India as an important global power with a powerful international voice. We are confident that close cooperation will benefit both our nations. So Ukraine considers India to be a global power, a country with a powerful voice. And Kiev wants India to use that voice in Ukraine. Maybe get Russia to stop the war. That's Kuleba's number one priority. We've told you about a peace summit being organized by Switzerland. It is scheduled for later this year. And Ukraine wants India to attend that summit. But will New Delhi agree? You see, this peace summit is based on Ukraine's formula. Russia has already rejected it. So chances are Moscow will not attend the talks, which is why getting India to attend would be a big coup. I'll give you two reasons why. Number one, India is a strategic partner of Russia, a country that is yet to criticize Putin's invasion. So having India on the table is big. It would be like one-upping Russia. Reason number two. India is a leader of the global south. It can mobilize opinion among developing nations. We're talking about states in Africa, in Latin America, states that are indifferent to the war in Ukraine. But if India attends, all those states could take notice, maybe even take a cue from India. So I come back to the question, will New Delhi attend the summit? Well, the official pos position has been quite clear. India does not think war is the answer. It would like to see a diplomatic settlement. We took the position from the start that you are not going to get a solution to this conflict on the battlefield. Two years have passed. There were many who felt two years ago or somewhere in between that maybe they could. I think today many of them don't any longer. We have also been the country who have uh, the opportunity to talk to the Russians very frankly and bluntly on this issue. On different aspects, you know, others have used us to pass messages. Now, a couple of things to note here. One, India has been playing the middleman for a while. As Jay Shankar said, passing messages. And two, a military solution is unlikely. You need a diplomatic answer. If you add these two things, the takeaway is quite clear. India stands ready to mediate to bring an end to this horrible war. But for that, Ukraine needs to do a lot more. For starters, it needs to earn India's trust. There's a big deficit right now. And Kiev has contributed to that. 
Just look at some of their past statements. The first was in 2022. Kuleba himself made this remark. He said India's Russian oil imports had Ukrainian blood. The second came during the G20 last year. After a lot of haggling, New Delhi got a joint declaration. But look at how Ukraine reacted. Nothing to be proud of. Those were their words. They thought the statement was easy on Russia. The third comment came after the G20. Zelensky's advisor said India had, quote unquote, weak intellectual potential. I don't think New Delhi has forgotten these attacks. And one belated visit won't change that. So Kuleva's first job is to repair the damage, to build some trust between both sides. And secondly, to have realistic expectations. India may not be able to get a ceasefire or Russian withdrawal. But India can help elsewhere, maybe with prisoner swaps or evacuation corridors or Black Sea exports or humanitarian aid. Those are all achievable goals, goals that do not require India to ignore Russian interests. Because let's face it, that is India's red line. Minister Jay Shankar mentioned it recently. He said India and Russia have taken extra care to look after each other's interest. And that will not change overnight. So Kuleba has his work cut out. We'll be tracking all these developments closely.